Hi there, welcome back up to the loft with me, Jennifer Kirk, here on Weir Yard. And following on from a recent video I did about uh, just touching on the hard wiring of a non-DCC locomotive in a matter of minutes using the Hornby 4-pin chip, which I think is an excellent choice for these such locomotives on account of its small form factor and the fact that you've only got the four wires that you need to deal with. So a lot of people have been asking a few follow-on questions from that, so I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to be able to show you the stage-by-stage -stage process with two fairly common locomotives that give you a representation of the work that's involved. These two particular locomotives, we've got the Backman 45XX262 Prairie Tank, that's an earlier release of the model, and that means that it's not DCC ready in any way. So it's a good basis to be able to show you what is involved with very, very quickly hard wiring such a locomotive. And then I've got one of the earlier releases as well of the Backman Class 8 diesel shunter. Backman did an awful lot of different livery options of these, renumbers, reissues, and a lot of the earlier ones just aren't DCC ready, but not to fear. They are a very easy proposition to hardwire with the Hornby 4-pin chip. So I'm looking forward to being able to guide you through the process with both of these. chosen here the x9659 from hornby if you look at the uh, affiliate links below that will give you an option to go and purchase these from hattons which is about the cheapest that i've been able to find them so uh, if you're struggling to get hold of them just uh, follow those links and uh, get as many as you need they're a really good starting point so let's get to it these are the tools that you're going to need pretty basic so i've got my soldering iron there it's just warming up uh, this is quite a high powered one, it's quite old but it does the job. We've got there as well the solder, electrical insulating tape, you're going to need that just to make sure that there's no shorting caused by the uh, solder joints that we're going to be soldering into the wires. And we've got a pair of wire clippers and strippers there, very very useful tool. We've got a pair of ordinary pliers and this is really just to avoid putting stress on solder joints so you can grab hold of the end of the wire with that and then use the stripper to uh, bear a section of the wire without putting any stress back to where the wire is fixed. And then we've got a set of scissors that we're going to be using to cut the electrical tape. The only other tools you're going to need is a small jeweler's screwdriver such as this and that's just to get into the body of these locomotives. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. On the Class 8 shunter it's pretty easy to get the lid off. Uh, I've dealt with this in a previous video. You just leave this back coupling off, you'll see then it reveals a screw hole. Undo that screw, just down there there's a little clip, unclip that. And you may also need to just prise out a little wire that's part of the detail in there. And then the top just lifts off. And uh, you can see there at the front there's just like a little hook that hooks in underneath. Now you'll find that on these non-DCC ready uh, locomotives you've got that big circuit board there. And we're not actually interested in that. What we are interested in is you see these two wires that run to the contacts on the motor. And then further down underneath you'll see two wires going to solder tabs. They're going to the pickups. So what we actually want to do is free up these from the circuit board. And again the other ones from the circuit board at the bottom. And then you can actually disregard this entire circuit board. And that comes into play when once that's removed... That space there is then perfect for the Hornbeat 4-pin chip to sit in so that you get no issues whatsoever with clearances inside the body. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this prepped ready for the soldering stage. When it comes to the uh, Backman Prairie, again, it's a pretty easy process. We've got one screw at the back and then we've got another screw at the front. You just move the bogies to one side and that's pretty common with a lot of locomotives and you see there... Once they're unscrewed, the entire chassis just lifts slowly out. So we can see here, we've got a similar setup to uh, what we've got on the uh, uh, Class 8 locomotive. And we've got our two wires from pickups, 
we've got another two wires coming from uh, the motor and a circuit board here which we're going to just take out and get rid of. Now we may need to get rid of some of these bits and pieces here as well. We're not really, I don't think, going to need any of these. So what I would tend to do is see how well it runs with all these left in place. If there's any kind of issues then we can look at removing some of this. But uh, it's far easier to uh, remove later any of this extra electricery if we find that we need to, uh, you don't want to have to put something back that you've accidentally removed that is very necessary. So again, I'm going to prep this for the soldering stage. I've just undone the screw just there to remove this piece of circuit board. It's still connected on the wires and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my snippers and I'm going to snip and snip there. That's all I want to keep from these wires and again these are coming from the pickups underneath so I'm going to snip them as well and uh, just make sure that they've gone all the way through. Again that piece of circuit board, bin it. So what we've got there now is our two wires from the pickups, two to the motor. So I'm just going to bare the ends, tin them with some solder and then I'm going to prepare the chip just as we did for the class 8 and solder it effectively just bridging in between these sets of wires and then we're going to see if this works okay. If not, if we have any issues then we might need to remove some of these but I'm a firm believer that if you don't need to remove them it's probably best to leave them be. So I'm going to get on and I'm going to prepare the chip and solder it in. Well, I've gone ahead and done the soldering and you can see there where the wires that came on the chip weren't long enough I've just extended them using some of the spare wire I've just cut that off that board there just to use that and that makes sure that we've not got strained wires to the chip itself. Now where we've got that solder I'm going to use some of the black electrical tape just a very small amount to go around that just to make sure that that doesn't short on anything. Right I've gone ahead and done that and what I've also done is I've put a little bit of that electrical tape behind the chip and uh, just a little bit on the top there which I might just trim a bit more just to make sure that that chip holds in position whilst the lid goes on. Um, and then really the next step is test it, it works, lid back on, program it, and that's it, done. So here we are, programmed and on the track, apply a bit of power, and that works just fine. So we just get the lid back on, and that's one locomotive hardwired in minutes. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, and oorail.co.uk. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks, and catch you later.